Hey everyone, happy Memorial Day. My name's Jen and I just got off the Carnival of Mardi Gras and I thought I would uh, give you my likes and dislikes of my cabin. I was in cabin 1020, which is the front part of the ship on the port side. And uh, this is my third time being in a balcony in the last year and a half on the Carnival Mardi Gras. Um, but before I go into that, I thought you might find some uh, facts about the Carnival of Mardi Gras pretty interesting that are unique to the ship. So let's get into that first and then we'll do a cabin tour and a review of the cabin. Okay, so here's some uh, top five facts that are unique to the Carnival of Mardi Gras. First, it's the very first cruise ship that has a roller coaster at sea called the Bolt. It's 800 feet long, there's some twists and turns and drops, and it's about 187 feet above the deck. The next thing, it is the biggest carnival ship ever. The Mardi Gras is the largest ship in the carnival fleet with a guest capacity of more than 5,200 at double occupancy. It's also the first of Carnival's new excellence class of ships, introducing a new era of innovation. Third, it is leading the way in terms of eco-friendly ships. It is the first cruise ship to be fully powered by liquefied natural gas, which significantly reduces emissions and is considered a cleaner fuel than many traditionally used on ships. Fourth, there's unique zones for unique experiences. The ship is organized into six unique thematic zones, including the French Quarter, Summer Landing, Grand Central, La Piazza, Lido, and the Ultimate Playground. Each zone has its own distinct style and atmosphere, providing passengers with a variety of unique dining, entertainment, and leisure options. Last but not least, the ship's name honors its history. So the Mardi Gras pays homage to the original Mardi Gras Carnival cruise ship, which entered service into 1972. The introduction of the ship and its fun casual approach to cruising helped to revolutionize the cruise industry. So without further ado, now let's take a look at the cabin. All right, so we're going into the cabin and notice that you have to keep your key or some type of credit card in that slot to keep the power on. What I really loved is it had a lot of drawers. So you can see the pull-out drawers in the closet. I'm going to show you some more more drawers in the closet which is pretty rare. You don't always see drawers in a closet. It's usually shelves. And then you have that wonderful safe that you can lock your passport, your car, credit card, your cash in, and then more space. We didn't even use all of the space. A good amount to hang clothes, I don't overpack. That's a whole other video I'm doing about how you don't overpack. I love that full length mirror. Now going into the main part of the cabin, you can see there are a couple shelves, a good amount of desk space. That fridge gets pretty cool. More drawers, sorry for the fingers. I think there could be more shelves. I, I didn't think there were enough. Um, the reason there was a towel there is because it got pretty damp in there from the humidity. Couch is great. We never sat on it. Love the TV. You could get behind it to add the Roku, which I have another video on. Now you're going to see me try to open up the glass door. The glass door is great. I loved uh, that it was a pretty full top to bottom glass door so you could get a good window view of the ocean. There's me trying to actually open up the glass door. Eventually I figured this thing out. It's not that hard. And just remember to close it, latch it so the air conditioner actually goes on. Uh, I thought the balcony was pretty nice. Um, it was privacy from the top. So people from the top of me couldn't see the balcony. The 
bed's super comfortable. Uh, did not like the USB on the side. It's it's good. It's there. It doesn't charge. I mean, it, you have to need, use a lightning charger for anything to happen. So I just use my extension cord. The TV, again, like I said, was really nice. The bed was super comfy. Love the towel animal every night. That light was nice. Uh, what I didn't like, you can barely see it. There's a couple little shelves. Not enough space to hide any, uh, store anything. Now we're going to go to the bathroom. The bathroom is good. Good size. I like that it didn't have that nasty curtain where I'm sure it's you know, like other curtains have touched everyone's bodies. So it's a good size uh, shower. There we have some space underneath that I never used to store things. I didn't like the square rectangular sink because nothing, it, it just, it, it creates a lot of soil. So anytime you have a drip in there, it just sits there because it's pretty flat. They give you a toilet brush so you can clean up a little bit. Those towel bars are kind of short in length, so not a lot there. Nice to have the extra outlet. They leave you extra toilet paper. Again, I think they could stand to give us more shelving in the bathroom. Hey everyone, so um, what you've been waiting for is how much did I pay for this balcony? Uh, cabin so I paid 2300 and um, I didn't go through this and show you a review but there is an interior balcony that I I booked for um, others that was 1800 and how did I do this um, take advantage of the fact that maybe your bank has um, a relationship with a travel agency that gives discounts so Essentially, I work through USAA. That's where my banking is. They work through a, a discount travel agency if it has relationships. So I got about a 4% discount. Plus, I booked last year, so a year in advance. So two things. Find some type of partnerships that whoever you're banking with or whoever you're with has a partnership with. And then in addition, book in advance. So that's what I paid for the cabin. In addition, two things that I couldn't say with the walkthrough that aren't obvious is that I absolutely loved the temperature control in the room. It was it was like the air conditioning was great. Usually it cuts off at night. It's horrible. It's your typical hotel room situation where you have to kind of get up and walk around for it to turn around, turn on. Um, so the temperature control, the air conditioning was great. Um, and also... The room steward was awesome. She had a great attitude, um, and I gave her a lot of extra money for that, which I have a whole other video on why you should tip your room steward a lot more than you maybe already do right now. So that's what I want to say. This is what I paid. If you were to book this cabin, say, last minute, I easily think it would be about 50 to 60 to even 100% more. So book in advance, get on Carnival, whatever your cruise line is, and book a year, two, three, whatever they let you do, because likely they will let you cancel last minute. So worst case, you might lose your deposit. Some will just give your deposit back. But basically, my theory is I always know I cruise in December around the holidays. I cruise into September, September. I cruise in May with the family. At minimum, those three I book as far in advance as possible. So again, those are my tips for getting a good deal on a cabin. And that's what I paid. And um, anyway, thank you for watching. Of course, like, subscribe, because I'm going to have a lot of content for this channel related to Carnival and cruising tips. Thank you.